Oh my goodness, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. Some people are sitting around talking about how the sky is about to fall because forbearance is ending. Stick around, let me talk about it for a second with you and tell you that the sky is not falling. Hey everybody, it's Eric out here in Las Vegas and I'm going to talk about the end of forbearance that's coming up and how some people think that there's going to be a bunch of bargains coming along and foreclosures. Nothing can be further from the truth. And before we get too far, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can get some more great information about what's going on in the real estate space and what's going on here in Las Vegas because I know you want to know because the housing market is still the most important thing in the world. Hey, some people believe that we're going to have another wave of foreclosures like we had 15 years ago. Nothing can be further from the truth. As a matter of fact, it's just the opposite. So I got about four good reasons to go over with you about how we are going into a new renaissance in housing. So let's go ahead and start this up. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Reason number one. You know, during the 2006 to 2008 time frame, there were about 9.3 million people in financial distress. This time around, just the number of people who have taken the forbearance is about 1.8 million people. Last time I checked, 1.8 is less than 9.3. On top of that, some of these people took forbearance purely because they could. Kind of like the people who didn't pay their rent because they could get away with it. Some people did it as a financial move, not because they were broke, but because they could. They figured that they could put the rent, uh, their payments at the back end or magically something would happen. But now they have to pay again, they'll start paying because guess what? There's a difference. Remember before they were underwater. How many people do you know are underwater now? Mm. Last time I checked, uh, housing prices have gone up. Let's see, prices go up. Um, let me think this through here. Prices go up. They've gone up 24% in the last year. Oh yeah, they're not underwater. Who's going to lose their home when it's not underwater? So that's reason number one. Reason number two just the plain statistics. Of those 1.8 million, did you go back to reason number one when I finished it up? Almost 90% of those 1.8 million have extreme equity in their homes. Who gets foreclosed on? People who don't have equity in their homes. Well, if they have all of this equity, what are they gonna do? They're just gonna put the house on the market. So you're saying, okay, great. They put their house on the market. Okay, that's gonna affect the housing market. Well, according to the National Association of Realtors, we're currently six million houses behind where we need to be right now. Again, 1.8 is less than six. So if every last house was put on the market tomorrow of every person who was in forbearance, it's barely gonna make a dent. And by the way, if you've been watching my videos, there's already a plan for the people who actually can't pay the money back from forbearance. All of those hedge funds from Wall Street have already started lining up their ducks. They've already started getting their money ready. Billions, tens of billions of dollars have already been set aside by the hedge funds to buy those houses up. Remember what we talked about, to turn them into rentals. That's getting ready to happen. And that's for those who actually can't catch up. Many of them are going to be able to catch up. Those who don't, Wall Street. And some will get listed. And you know what? That's a great thing. Because I know there are plenty of buyers out there who are going, please, please let them list their house so I can have some place to live because there's still multiple offers. I'll tell you right now. I put in four offers just this week. One, two, three, four failures because multiple offers. Even when we go in, right now it's like 
I'm, I'm trying to put in offers that are just when we start off hey there are no other offers by the time we put an offer oh yeah we just got one last night uh, by the time it's all done it's three offers it's like everybody's waiting the last minute until I put in an offer and then all of a sudden two offers then we lose it hey breaks of the game right reason three going back to reason two again that absorption rate the current market even if all 1.8 million were to come on the market there's already an eager supply of people ready to absorb them unlike back in 2006 to 2008 there already were plenty of houses on the market so houses flooding the market like those 9.3 million they were just there to flood it to cause the housing market to crash uh, I'm looking where, where, where are those extra houses at oh no they're not there I'd love to have all 1.8 million to hit the market and I, I wouldn't love those people to uh, lose their homes well, who's gonna really lose their home last time I checked they all have positive equity they're gonna walk away with money in their pocket some of them a few hundred thousand dollars so it seems like a win-win situation in this case and finally the piece of resistance as the French would say those in power they don't want this ever to happen again they're gonna make sure it doesn't happen they're gonna start shoring up the markets because there's already been announcements by the White House on what they're planning to do both the Department of Housing and Urban Development and the Veterans Administration have announced new things for government backed loans they're coming up with new programs for those who actually cannot meet their uh, new obligations once forbearance ends to reduce their principal by 25 percent are you kidding me people who already have positive equity in their home they're going to reduce their principal by 25 percent so it's like throwing more free money at people who have uh, equity in their homes people are going to fight like crazy to keep that or they're going to sell and then still put more money in their pockets so uh, no matter what it's a win-win situation and these are the reasons things aren't going to turn out as bad as they were the last time we had a housing crash so we're not living in a bubble we're living in uh, I don't know a reverse bubble bizarro world something like that but anyway folks I uh, hope this helped explain to you some of the things that are going on, the factors that are going on in the country right now. Hopefully we don't have something that really comes out and really affects it because, to be honest, it's going to affect even more than that because we're really in a housing crisis right now and it's the absolute opposite of the last housing crisis. So again, hit that subscribe button so you can learn more about what's going on out there. And of course, watch all the videos that I have out there for you because I'm trying to put down the straight dope. See you guys later.